Uh, hi everyone, Surthany Prize Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Lobster Fight album, Pink, Black, and Orange in the Corners. This is a new full-length LP from a Colorado music duo that's creating some band camp buzz based on the unique cross-section of genres popping up on this project, which is absolutely chaotic, lo-fi, emo-tinged bedroom rock that is as messy as its emotional emotionally overwhelming. From what I understand, the entire project is performed by multi-instrumentalist Anguel Sanchez, as well as drummer James Gove, and the track list is sectioned into eight separate parts that run from about one minute and 30 seconds to over 12. From the runtime of these tracks to the production, the performances, and song structure too, this thing is just an unkempt beast. But such things tend to thrive on the Bandcamp platform, where DIY creativity reign supreme, really continuing the raw, impassioned, and experimental songcraft of figures like R. Stevie Moore and Daniel Johnston, consciously or unconsciously. These days, that tradition is represented more by artists like uh, Will Toledo of Car Seat Headrest or even Alex G, who have both transitioned into something a bit more industry these days. And at this very early stage, I think Lobster Fight is showing a similar potential. This record's emotional potency and explosivity makes itself known right away on the intro. The track kicks off very chaotically with these screamed cycling vocal samples and really sentimental organ chords, which I, I think the first few <laughs> seconds of this track sort of displays the separation of tones and sounds that you're going to hear throughout much of this project. These sounds then give way to some chords being played in 3-4 with some pianos and guitar and tiny toy keyboard, but the mix is just so lo-fi. All of these sounds just melt together into this turbulent wall of sound. Even though the fidelity may be limited here, the track still sounds so huge. It's like the recording can barely contain these fireworks of emotion. Plus, if you're able to listen a little bit past the mud, there are some interesting details and builds going on in the instrumentation on this thing. There's also something really quaint about the rawness of this track, too, especially during the vocal and harmonica break in the last leg that reads to me as being very unicorns -esque. Then the following track, too, I think shows just how reserved the introduction of this project was, because uh, both these guys seem to go even harder instrumentally on this one. Sanchez's strained screams are barely piercing through the blasted out walls of pianos and drums. The final moments of the track sound like the entire world that all of this is existing in just crumbling, crashing down into dust. And while I guess this is a moment where I don't think the song translates as well as it could, the passion is certainly there. Meanwhile, 3 is a short, bit-crushed acoustic number with these fluttering guitar lines and drums that are so digitally distorted they sound like these 8-bit cannons going off in every direction. Plus, Sanchez's vocal performance here reads like something that wouldn't sound too uncomfortable on, I don't know, let's say just about any outsider folk record. The following track, Moon Pie, then sees the drums and pianos coming back again with a vengeance hammering onto these synced up chords and rhythms that are absolutely devastating in terms of how loud and noisy they are. They serve as an introduction to these absolutely manic verses that careen into one quick build after the next. The performance, the songwriting, everything sounds so fragmented, it sounds so out of control, and yet it's uh, really together at the same time. It's tough to put into words and I think even tougher to quantify. If I had to liken it to anything, I would say it's a raging river of songcraft and maybe you do yourself more of a favor just allowing the current to take you and toss you in whatever direction it's going to <laughs> rather than trying to sit down and figure out what would this sound like if it was played straight. Then the track V or 5 is maybe the crown jewel of the record. The mathy instrumental transitions, tongue-in-cheek jazz chords, as well as the emo-inspired lead vocals, all coalesce in a way that feels natural, and uh, uh, the, I guess, slight decrease in noise in the mix allows these instrumental intricacies to translate a bit more effectively. I mean, in the grander scheme of things, it still sounds like total chaos, but this song at least gives me the impression that 
were the duo to decide one day that they may uh, clear the brush a little bit, as it were, uh, there would still be some beauty and a lot of great ideas to reveal uh, beyond that. Especially as the instrumentation on this track seems to tone down into a really hypnotic, droney break in the second half, which eventually gives way to this heartening experimental folk outro. Track number six here serves as an interlude or a palate cleanser of sorts before the longest song on the entire project. It is a harsh and shoegazy bit that is packed with these tight, shimmering, and cycling tones. And then the following frog is a lo-fi emo bedroom rock opus, which undergoes a long series of progressions in its 12-minute runtime, some of which move me, some don't really. I think the first leg of the song, for example, is, is maybe just too distorted for its own good. The most moving section of the entire track for me is really the meditative guitar instrumental that starts just before the halfway point. I have to say it's kind of nice for the duo to create this moment of serenity that almost achieves, I guess, the, the intimacy and uh, the rawness of like some early Microphones tracks. The closing track short song continues this gentle demeanor with these orchestrated bits of guitar and background vocals and beats that almost feel like a little lo-fi orchestra. And overall, that's pretty much the record. A really raw, exciting, and emotional experience. Experience. It is really messy and really difficult to make heads or tails of in some respects. Regardless, though, there's still a lot of encouraging and exciting ideas flying in every direction here. And as much as the sonic chaos as well adds to this project's personality, I wouldn't necessarily say it's like necessary for the band to continue in exactly this way in order to uh, continue creating compelling recordings. Feeling a light to decent seven on on this one, Tran. Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? Uh, you're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is a, another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Lobster Fight, uh, forever.